Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. First year students, university leaders gathered. It is a joy to be with each of you, even though we may be in separate spaces. My name is Johnny Cagwin, and I serve as the coordinator of religious life programs within student affairs here at CMU. For many, a spiritual or religious or secular identity helps them to make sense of the world and their individual experiences throughout life. Even though there are many differences in these worldview identities, ideals like a desire for peace, a posture of thankfulness and hospitality, or a call to give and serve others are shared in common. In this brief invocation, I invite you to join me in a moment of, in a practice of gratitude and pause. In just a moment, I will invite you to close your eyes, either literally or within your imagination, and to walk with me through a few statements. As you hear them read, or as you read the captions, consider who or what comes to mind. Consider all that you have experienced that has helped you achieve this new start at Carnegie Mellon. Please join me. Each of us is on our own journey in life, and we hold many things in common. Each of us have family, friends, teachers, coaches, mentors who have helped us to reach this day. And for them, we are filled with gratitude. Each of us have experiences of joy, of success, of celebration. And for these, we are filled with meaning and with hope. Each of us have experiences of pain, of struggle, of confusion. And in these, we seek to understand how to continue to grow in the face of adversity. Each of us have a community or an identity or a drive that helps us to understand the world we live in. And for these, we are thankful. As you navigate what comes to mind, I invite you to place one hand over your heart, to slow your breathing, to pay attention and take a couple deep breaths. You are truly you, and you are really here. And we all join in thankfulness for the opportunity that lay ahead of each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. And thanks also to Carnegie Mellon's Pipes and Drums for that great opening. Good afternoon and welcome to Convocation 2021. My name is Andrew Thompson and I'm one of this year's head orientation counselors. It is my honor to welcome you to the Carnegie Mellon community. We have gathered here this afternoon to share a tradition we call Convocation. Convocation formally marks the beginning of your college career, a bookend that complements graduation as a formal conclusion. Take a look around you. You're joined by classmates in your college or school who will spend the next four plus years alongside you. You will gather with these same peers and the rest of the class of 2025 plus at your commencement in Gessling Stadium, marking the end of your college journey, which has started this week. Three years ago, I sat on my own convocation as a first year student, and I could have never imagined standing in front of you three years later. In those three years, I met so many people, performed three flash dances for orientation, had more problem sets than I could remember, and have had priceless memories, priceless memories that I would not trade for the world. Convocation is the first step to your college journey. 
where you're going to find out more about yourself than you thought was possible. You're about to hear from several of our university leaders, and we hope you listen to their messages. They will provide you with their wisdom, perspective, insight, and tips for how you can make the most of your Carnegie Mellon experience. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Provost Jim Garrett. Dr. Garrett was named Provost and Chief Academic Officer of Carnegie Mellon University in January 2019 and has been a member of the CMU faculty since 1990. Prior to being named Provost, he served as Dean of the College of Engineering and head of the College's Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. In addition, Dr. Garrett received his Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, and PhD degrees in Civil and Environmental Engineering from Carnegie Mellon. And now, please join me in welcoming Provost Jim Garrett. Good afternoon, Carnegie Mellon class of 2025 plus. Andrew, thank you for that kind introduction, civil engineering, civil and environmental engineering, I should say. And also a big thank you to you and the other head orientation counselors for creating such an engaging experience for our first year students. As Andrew said, I'm Jim Garrett, Provost of Carnegie Mellon, and my pronouns are he, him, his. And it is my pleasure to join President Johanian, our deans, and university leadership in welcoming you to the Carnegie Mellon University community. Orientation week has traditionally been an exciting time on campus because you can feel the energy of a new academic year beginning. And feeling that energy on campus was one of the many things that I've missed during the last 18 years. I'm so pleased that we're, be able, we're able to conduct orientation week in person this year. Just seeing some of you on campus during this last week's orientation events has, has made me a little emotional. I truly enjoy seeing your faces, or at least your eyes. <laughs> And I also want to extend a warm welcome to those of you watching the simulcast from another location, and thank you for joining us. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you on campus in the coming weeks. I hope each of you are having an exciting, enjoyable, and memorable experience so far. Of course, at one point or another, we all experience some anxiety or uncertainty being here. But in this moment, as I consider the multiple and diverse voices and talents in your class, I feel each of you has an extremely bright future. As provost, one of my most important jobs is to meet with students, faculty, and staff to think about how we can create the best learning environment possible for you. As Andrew said, I myself received three degrees from Carnegie Mellon. After I graduated with my PhD, I left Pittsburgh for a few years, but came back to Carnegie Mellon as an assistant professor in 1990. After that, I never left. I had and still have such a deep respect for the unique culture here, for the people, for the academic rigor, the collegiality, and for the unlimited research and creative opportunities available to our students. Carnegie Mellon has unquestionably influenced my life in ways that would not have happened at other universities, and for that I am truly grateful. And no doubt, you have your own reasons that brought you to Carnegie Mellon. Maybe you were drawn to this campus for our excellent fine arts programs. Or maybe it was the opportunity to learn from the world's most brilliant designers, scientists, engineers, thought leaders in the humanities and social sciences, or policy and business leaders. The bottom line is, most of you chose CMU precisely for its outstanding academic reputation. You expect us to deliver an excellent education, and we promise each and every one of you that we will deliver. Every year at convocation, it is our tradition for the provost 
To quote our benefactor, Andrew Carnegie, when he established what we now know as Carnegie Mellon University. Our story began on November 15th, 1900, when Carnegie wrote to the mayor of Pittsburgh announcing his wish to establish a technical school. If the city of Pittsburgh, can, he wrote, if the city of Pittsburgh can furnish a site, I shall be delighted to furnish money for such a school. There are many questions to decide involving investigation, careful study, and much labor, but I am in a position to assure you that my heart is in the work. With that letter, the university began, and the phrase, my heart is in the work, became our motto. And I'm confident that this phrase will come to resonate in different ways for each of you. In 1905, the inaugural class enrolled 120 students. Most attended part-time in the evenings after work with more than 90% hailing from Pittsburgh. Now, over a century later, this incoming class looks very different. And I'm pleased to celebrate the diversity of this incoming class. For example, this year, CMU has 1,911 first year students from 45 states and 39 countries. 21% of you are joining us from international locations. 11% of your class are first generation college students. More than 50% are women, 48% are men, and 1.5% identify as non-binary. Our global, intellectually diverse community has a deep tradition of excellence in education, research, creativity, and scholarship. Today, you join our community, and we are a better university because you are here. We are committed to your success and are working hard to provide you with an innovative, inclusive, supportive, and excellent education experience at CMU. As you start your journey here, I encourage you to immerse yourself in the culture and activity CMU has to offer, including the programs from the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion and our sustainability initiative. We have a hands-on approach to learning and your active participation will lead you to success both in and out of the classroom. Reach out to your professors. Tap into the knowledge your academic, academic advisors can provide. Take advantage of the resources we have here on campus, like the Student Academic Success Center, which provides tools and strategies to assist you in learning at your highest capacity. And please, take the chance to get to know me too. I am always eager to get to know as many students as I can. Consider this your formal invitation to join me for my office hours, they're open once a month, uh, where you can meet me to talk about how things are going, discuss exciting new ideas, or share issues of concern. I genuinely enjoy my conversations at these office hours and sincerely hope you'll join me. As you begin your journey as a Tartan, I remind you that it is important, it is more important now than ever that we come together to support each other and our community. Take care of yourself and take care of one another. I look forward to seeing you on campus and in the classroom as we get this year started. And I wish you all an amazing year here at Carnegie Mellon University. It is now my pleasure to introduce student body president, Alexis Ozimok. Alexis is the head orientation counselor for Donner House and West Wing, and is a senior in our Dietrich College pursuing international relations and politics with a minor in business administration. Please join me in welcoming Alexis. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Hello, Carnegie Mellon, class of 2025 plus. I am so excited to welcome you to the start of your journey at CMU. 
I am your student body president, Alexis Ozimok. Thank you so much to the orientation program for the opportunity to address the incoming class. Now, before I start telling you what I've learned as a wizened, nearly ancient tartan, I want to congratulate you all for what you've done to make it here. Becoming a tartan is no easy feat, and by your acceptance, you have proved yourself beyond worthy of becoming a member of the Carnegie Mellon community. In my time at CMU, I've come to understand just how amazing this institution truly is, for I found that my differences were not something to be ashamed of, but rather celebrated. I hope you'll all indulge me for a moment in remembering my very own convocation. It was fall 2018, people were inexplicably eating Tide Pods, and that little boy was yodeling in Walmart. <laughs> I was sitting in the audience, just like you, with friends I had just made, scared for the future, but equally excited to see what my next four years held. And in that moment, I thought about where I came from. I grew up in a small rural community about an hour outside of Pittsburgh, where most people didn't pursue higher education and never moved out of our hometown. Many of my peers would enter the workforce straight after high school graduation. I was the first student from my high school, maybe ever, to attend CMU, and I was worried this would be evident to my peers. I spent the summer before college teaching myself not to use my small town Yinzer lingo switching out sweeper for vacuum cleaner, yins for all of you, dippy eggs for sunny side up and jeet jet to have you had dinner yet? I was afraid to tell people that no, I didn't come from a family of bankers, lawyers and doctors, but from generations of union steel workers and public school teachers. But a moment at my own convocation had stripped away the mask that I had created. The speakers at my own convocation told me that my story mattered, and what I brought to the table was unique, special, and valued. From that day forward, I entered CMU with a new pride and confidence, and I hope I can inspire you all to do the same. We all know that coming to Carnegie Mellon gives you a top-notch education, and we all understand the academic value in your upcoming four plus years here. But there's infinitely more to learn at CMU and in Pittsburgh. It's important that you leave not only with the academic knowledge to propel your future, but the experiences and understanding of years well lived. The CMU bubble is no joke, and too many students have never ventured past the Forbes Morewood intersection, lovingly once called the beep boop for the noise the crosswalk made. When I felt empowered to lean into my background as a true bleeds black and gold yinzer, I became excited to share all of the amazing opportunities our city has to offer. Pittsburgh has a rich cultural history and hundreds of neighborhoods to explore, and there's the only place where you can order fries on a salad. Learn more about what makes Pittsburgh so special, meet the people in our community that make this city so vibrant, and engage with others outside of the confines of the university. You never know what you'll learn. As a head orientation counselor, this is my moment to shamelessly promote Pittsburgh Connections and our day of service events later this week to take your first steps in building and growing your Pittsburgh community. So I hope in a few years when you're all old like me, you'll look back on your very own convocation and reflect with pride and satisfaction in all that you've done with your time and appreciate all that you've, done, all that you've learned. Lean into who you are. Your quirks, talents, and stories are worth sharing with your peers. By being unapologetically yourself, you make our community rich, diverse, and whole. And we are all blessed beyond measure to be in a community where our differences make our experiences better. You're going to thrive in being exactly who you are. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Andrew back to the podium. Thank you, Alexis. 
It is now my pleasure to introduce today's faculty speaker. Dr. Erica cochran Hameen is the incoming Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the School of Architecture, the co-director of the Center for Building Performance and Diagnostics, track chair of the Doctor of Professional Practice Program, and, assistant, and an assistant professor of architecture. She leads national and global efforts focused on equitable sustainability, occupant health and productivity, indoor environmental quality, energy policy, energy efficiency, and design equity. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Dr. Erica cochran Hamin. Thank you, Andrew. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be here today to be a part of the orientation team and to welcome you to Carnegie Mellon University. You are about to begin your journey at an amazing institution. Everyone at CMU has a unique experience. Each of those experiences enhances the diversity of our institution, and it facilitates tremendous opportunities to work collectively across disciplines to discover innovative solutions to complex problems. At CMU, we truly know no boundaries. And each of your unique experiences brings something special to the classroom, to this university, and to the world. At CMU, your experiences, your talent, creativity, and ingenuity will be cultivated, respected, and valued. As you begin your journey at CMU, I would like to share with you a little something about me and my experiences. I am a descendant of enslaved people, and our family tree dates back to the late 1700s to a woman named Aggie, who was born in Virginia and purchased by a family starting a plantation in South Carolina. My family remained on that plantation until after the Civil War, at which time they moved just a few miles away to start a sharecropping business. Growing up, I learned from my great-grandmother, my grandparents, and my parents countless stories about my family's ingenuity and creative solutions to increase their wealth, opportunities, and to gain an education. They had several what they called common sense solutions to save money and to keep the house warm in the winter and cool in the summer without the need of gas or electricity. Now, as a sustainability expert, I teach these common sense solutions so that I can help reduce the amount of people living in energy poverty. That's when you have a lack of access to safe, healthy, and affordable energy. This impacts billions of people globally, and right here in Pittsburgh, where many families here pay a higher proportion of their income to heat and cool their homes compared to other families in parts of the US. In my courses, I teach passive design strategies, some of those same strategies that I learned from my ancestors. But I use different names to describe them. I teach terms such as nighttime flush, pre-cooling, residential weatherization, natural ventilation, and thermal mass. And I teach computational methods to quantify carbon reductions as a result of these design strategies. Not only did I learn about passive design strategies from my family, I also learned the value of education. Education was always stressed in my family. I mentioned earlier that after the Civil War, many of my family members moved just down the road from the plantation. So growing up, I had the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time in that small town in South Carolina. While there, I spent countless hours with one of my great-grandmothers, a woman named Anna. Anna was born in the late 1800s after the Civil War. Her older siblings and her parents were former enslaved people. Anna could read and write, which was a big accomplishment for someone of her demographic. Anna and her husband had about 12 children, and the youngest three became college graduates. The entire family worked hard to send the youngest three to college at a time when most people, regardless of their demographic, were attending college. 
I took these values of hard work and education to heart. Now, our family has moved beyond one-room schoolhouses, and here I am at Carnegie Mellon. I'm a black woman, a descendant of former enslaved people turned sharecroppers, a descendant of civil rights activists, and a descendant of fellow educators. Yes, I face challenges along the way, but I always heard my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandmother's voice in my head reminding me about the value of education. With an education at CMU, you are poised to be innovators of new solutions that will help mitigate climate change. With your education at CMU, you are poised to become a Tony and Academy Award winner. With your degree at CMU, you're poised to be CEO of a Fortune 500 company. With your degree at CMU, you're poised to develop new algorithms and predictive model controls that will improve building energy efficiency and to create robots for NASA. Or design great works of art or architecture. You are part of the class of 2025 plus, and you are amazing. You graduated during a global COVID-19 pandemic and witnessed social outcry over the murders of unarmed black people, such as George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. You witnessed or possibly participated in the Stop Asian Hate, the Black Lives Matter movement, or participated in events to push for inclusion for all people, regardless of race, religion, nationality, sex, or sexual orientation and you are experiencing firsthand the negative impact of climate change, such as increased flooding and rising temperatures. I cannot begin to imagine your challenges, but I do know that you can achieve anything. Your time at CMU will be academically challenging and exhilarating. You will learn new skills that will establish a pathway for great outcomes. So before I end, I want to share three pieces of advice to the class of 2025 plus. Number one, make friends while you're here. <laughs> and know that these friends that you're making, they are gonna be part of your professional network because like you, they are future global leaders. Number two, take advantage of our interdisciplinary nature and find opportunities to learn from people in other disciplines than your major. Number three, find a mentor. Your mentor can be a member of our faculty, our staff. Your mentor can be a CMU alumni or someone you met at a lecture or a speaker that came to Carnegie Mellon. Mentors help with your professional accessibility and network. Mentors provide continual learning and they can serve as your trusted advisors. I end where I started. Welcome, class of 2025 to Carnegie Mellon University. <laughs> I look forward to seeing what you create. I look forward to the innovative solutions to challenges and to solve those challenges that made my generation ponder. I look forward to seeing you walking across the cut. Congratulations on beginning your journey at CMU. And now, I'd like to invite Andrew back to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cochran Hameen, for your perspective and advice. It's now my honor to introduce and award the class tile to this first year class. As Dr. Garrett mentioned, when Carnegie Mellon University opened our doors in 1905, 120 students comprised the charter class. When these students graduated in June 1908, a bronze tile was installed in the floor of the entrance to Baker Hall to commemorate their accomplishments. In that tradition, a tile has been added to the floor each year thereafter to honor the most recent graduating class. Each year, we award the class tile to two first year students who have been exemplary in their first year orientation program. It is my pleasure to, to present the class of 2025 with your class tile. Turnilla Robinson is a first year architecture major in the College of Fine Arts from the Bronx, New York. She lives in Morwood Gardens. 
Reese Collins is a first year student in Dietrich College from Hillsborough, California. He lives in Much. Will Ternilla and Reese please step forward? It is our hope that this tile will be passed through the ownership of each college over the next four years. Through being passed department to department, I'm confident that by commencement, it will reflect numerous memories from the entire class of 2025 plus. The next four years will hold many things for you. New people, new experiences, and new challenges. I hope that, by, that, I hope that when your tile is added to Baker Hall upon your commencement, you will have made the most of these new opportunities and contributed in your own unique way to the Carnegie Mellon community. It is now my pleasure to introduce Carnegie Mellon University's 10th president, Dr. Farnam Jahanian. Known for his passionate engagement with students and his dedication to improving their experience on campus, Dr. Jahanian has had an enormous impact at Carnegie Mellon and he and his wife, Tris, are also proud parents of a CMU alumna. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Carnegie Mellon University, Dr. Farnam Jahanian. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And Andrew, thank you very much for your kind introduction and also for your leadership throughout orientation. Um, I should disclose to you that I got to meet Andrew uh, when he was a freshman. And you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> uh, also, thanks to uh, Johnny Kagman, as always, for your inspiring work. Thank you very much. And to Professor uh, Cochran Hameen, um, Erica, grateful to you for your thoughtful and powerful remarks. Thank you again to all of you. I want to thank our provost, Jim Garrett, uh, who's been working tirelessly to prepare us for fall semester. Thank you for your leadership. And of course, to our student body president, Alexis Ozamak. Um, you several times mentioned, first of all, thank you for your leadership, but several times you mentioned about you're getting old, or you're old. You have no idea. <laughs> you, you know that picture of Andrew Carnegie from 1904? The young man standing next to him was Jim Garrett when he was an, when, when he was an undergrad at CMU. More seriously, thank you, Jim, for your leadership. And Alexis, thank you for your leadership as well. Really grateful to everyone who makes the start of this school year such a success. It's really been a team effort. Uh, let me start by acknowledging a few folks. Uh, let me start with my colleagues in the Office of Admissions who helped process the largest number of applications in our university's 100-year history to secure this outstanding class that we have here. Grateful to Mike Steidel, our Dean of Admissions, for his leadership. Let's give uh, Mike, who's not here with us this afternoon, and his team a round of applause. I want to recognize also uh, Gina Casolino, our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Julie Short, Schultz, and the entire Student Affairs crew, and countless staff members across CMU's academic and administrative units who have been working tirelessly to make this orientation a success. Let's give them a round of applause. As I'm sure all of you have experienced this, orientation success depends on enthusiasm and dedication of so many people, especially our student volunteers. Uh, I want to ask you to join me, including everybody who's watching at uh, the other locations on campus, in thanking the orientation student leadership for each house community. I'm going to mention their names, and they're sitting right here. And, and if you want to stand up, that's great. But uh, give them a round of applause. Let's start, let's start with Riley Kunevish for 
HOC for Margaret Morrison. Ovind Menon, who is the HOC for Stever. I should also acknowledge that Govind was a, a student body president last year, and I really appreciate his leadership last year, especially during a very difficult time during COVID. Thank you very much for your leadership, Govind. Um, Joshua Morrow, HOC for Morwood E Tower. Of course, Alexis Ozamak, HOC for Donner and West Wing. <laughs> Lauren Pat, orientation leader for the Fifth Avenue neighborhood. Lauren. <laughs> Q Quay, HOC for Margaret Morrison neighborhood. Andrew Thompson, HOC for Morewood Gardens. And last but not least, Jesse Wallace, HOC for Marge. In addition to everybody that I mentioned, there are 120 orientation leaders and counselors who've made your first few days so welcoming. I would also like to thank more than 300 students, volunteers, staff, and faculty assisting with 250 orientation events, not to mention the 143 resident assistants, community advisors, and house fellows who are helping you settle in your new homes across our 13 first year residential communities. Especially as you get used to being sort of together for the first time, their welcoming presence is so valuable and truly appreciated. Last but not least, i also like to thank, <clears throat> excuse me, Perry Nasik and Gwyneth Chand and the student staff of this activity board technical committee who volunteer each year to help with all the technical needs for orientation week programming. Once again, let's give all of these leaders, organizers, volunteers, a round of applause. By the way, I'm smiling, just you can't, you can't tell. <laughs> so class of 2025, as I mentioned during my welcome address on Sunday, you have arrived at Carnegie Mellon University at a pivotal time for humanity. The future is constantly evolving, thanks in part to rapid advances in digital technologies, access to unprecedented amount of data, and a powerful conger convergence of cross-disciplinary knowledge. The pandemic has accelerated many trends and caused more seismic shift across our global society. Consider for a moment how much the world has changed just in the past year and a half. We went from Zoom being a feature on your camera to relying on, on it as a platform to educate millions across the world celebrate educations, talk to family and friends, and even go on dates. By June of last year, 42% of US labor workforce were working from home. Today, it seems possible that the future of work might never be the same. Some of the changes have been very positive. More opportunities to connect with people from all over the world, greater focus on the outdoor activities and more time with our loved ones. But also, it's been disruptive and at times emotionally taxing. But for far too many, the pandemic has widened socioeconomic divides in healthcare, childcare, food security, job stability, and so much more. In particular, COVID-19 has affected minority, community, minority communities in vastly disproportionate numbers. The devastating impact of this pandemic 
on the underserved in our nation and across the world is undeniable. And it should be of serious concern to all of us. I don't say this to depress you, but really to illustrate a point. Right now, the world is in desperate need of you. The challenges we face as a global society are truly unprecedented. But the foundation you will build here at Carnegie Mellon will for sure prepare you to embrace these challenges head on and provide solutions to society's problems. Through your studies and the opportunities you will have here at CMU, you will help to make the world more inclusive, more equitable, more inspiring, and more sustainable. While the story of your impact is not yet untold, is yet not un untold, what I can say with confidence is that your generation will profoundly shape our future. That makes me very optimistic that humanity's best days lie ahead. The pandemic has also revealed the incredible strength of CMU community and how important it is to be together. For example, we learned a lot about leveraging technology for distance learning, but we missed some of those moments of experiential learning that only come from a robust in-person residential experience. It feels wonderful to be together. I have a question for you. Are you happy to be attending CMU in person? Well, we're really, really happy that you're here. Are you sad your parents and your loved one finally left town? <laughs> I heard those chuckles. OK, fine. But we can all agree that you're very happy to be here. Over the last several days, you've already begun to absorb the CMU culture and learn the rhythm of our campus life. You're starting to feel comfortable, hopefully, and beginning to make friends. While your classes don't begin for another few days, today's convocation ceremony marks the official start of your college experience. It may be hard to appreciate the significance of this event as we gather in rooms across campus via simulcast, but we're gonna try to give it a try today. All of the students watching in rooms across campus, do me a favor. Take a moment to look around you and appreciate the journey you're about to embark up upon. In fact, I encourage you to do this throughout your college career. As many older adults have probably already told you with a wistful or jealous look in their eyes, college goes by really fast. So every once in a while, as you walk across the campus, stop for a moment and remind yourself that you're exactly where you want to be, that this is a wondrous moment in your life and that you have earned this rare opportunity to expand your horizons with some of the most gifted scholars on the planet. The next four years will undoubtedly be some of the most transformative of your young lives. You will begin lifelong friendships and discover passions that ignite, ignite academic and professional careers. CMU will change you. And you will change CMU. As you set out to, to make your mark, I, wanna, I want you to keep in mind, Carnegie Mellon is more than just academics and a collection of accomplishments to boost your resume. We're a community connected to one another by a common sense of purpose, pride, and spirit, and by a core set of values that include diversity and inclusion, collaboration, empathy, and respect. Let these values guide you even when you encounter perspectives or ideas that are different from your own. Here at Carnegie Mellon, we all bear responsibility for ensuring that this university is welcoming, 
where every person is treated with respect and dignity. Remember, when we recruit diverse perspectives to our community, and I think this is what the provost was saying, and consider ideas from across the spectrum in a culture of civil discourse, we all win. Class of 2025, whatever your school, college, or your field of study, I am confident that each of you will not only come to respect and appreciate our unique CMU culture, you will also shape it. So once again, welcome to Carnegie Mellon community and enjoy this most wonderful chapter in your lives. Before, before I move to the more formal part of the ceremony, um, <clears throat> I want to make a shameless plug. <laughs> First, CMU, including various schools, colleges, departments, and student groups, is very active on social media. You can find all of these on platforms like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, even Facebook, and more. So go ahead and follow us. But here comes the shameless plug. Even your president is on Instagram. <laughs> Actually, Provost Garrett is on Twitter. I admit it, I am not an influencer nationally. <laughs> but I do love taking selfies with students that I run across campus. So we took a pause actually because of pandemic last year. But I'm excited to resume this tradition this fall and we'll definitely do it. But I'm sure some of you are wondering whether you're gonna see me on TikTok. The answer is no. <laughs> uh, but feel free to follow me, and here's the shameless plug, at CMU Farnham on Instagram. And if you see me on campus, I hope you'll stop and say hello, whether it's me, the provost, deans, and other faculty members. By the way, if you're curious that yeah, oh, where'd you go? We'll go back to that previous one. Thank you. I was going to say something about Andrew. <laughs> there is Andrew Thompson with his fabulous shirt. And that was his freshman year. And I looked up the date. And that was April of 2019, three years ago. Anyway, and now he's a senior. <laughs> now I would like to ask the incoming students in each college to stand in your uh, respective location as I announce you, <clears throat> so that I may present you to your dean, your school, <clears throat> or college leadership. And we're gonna go one college at a time, and programs, and different locations. So if you're at a different location from economy, when I ask you to stand, please stand and uh, with your deans and college leadership. We're gonna start with the College of Engineering. Will the students from the College of Engineering watching in Rangos please rise along with the deans and the college leadership? Dean Sanders, college leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the engineering class of 2025. Will the students from the College of Fine Arts watching in Purnell please rise along with the dean and college leadership? Dean Poole and the college leaders, there you go. <laughs> Faculty and staff, I present to you the CFA class of 2025 and 2026 for architecture. Congratulations, please be seated. Let me also welcome CFA's new dean while we're at this, Dr. Mary Ellen Poole. Welcome, Dr. Poole, to CMU's first convocation for you. We're really happy to have you here. I know you can hear me. Also in Purnell, 
Will the students from the Bachelor of Humanities and Arts program, Bachelor of Science and Arts program, and Bachelor of Computer Science and Arts program please rise along with their deans? And some of you are here. Dean Poole, Dean Shinas, Dean Dorge, Dean Marshall, Herbert, leaders, faculty, and staff of the College of Fine Arts, Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences, the Mellon College of Science, and the School of Computer Science, I present to you the BHA, BSA, BCSA class of 2025. How's that? Please be seated. All right, here we go. Will the students from the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences <laughs> watching here in McConomy, please rise. Oh, you're already standing. <laughs> Along with the deans and of course the college leadership. Dean Shinas, leaders and faculty and staff, I present to you the Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Science class of 2025. Congratulations. Please be seated. Also in McConomy, will the students from the Information Systems Program in the Dietrich and Heinz Colleges please rise along with the deans and college leadership. There you go, I can see you. Dean Shinas. <laughs> Dean, Dean Krishnan, Dean Shinas, college leaders, faculty, staff of the college, I present to you the IS class of 2025. <laughs> Mellon, can you hear me? I think I heard him back. <laughs> All right. Will the students from the Mellon College of Science watching in the Mellon Institute Please rise along with the dean and college leadership. Dean Dorge, college leaders, faculty, and staff, I present to you the MCS class of 2025. Once again, congratulations. Please be seated. Will the students from the School of Computer Science watching in Simmons Auditorium please rise, along with the dean and school leadership. Dean Bear, school leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the SCS class of 2025. Congratulations, please be seated. Will the students from the Tepper School of Business watching in Doherty Hall please rise along with the dean and college leadership. Dean Baju, college leaders, faculty and staff, I present to you the Tepper School Business Class of 2025. Congratulations to the Tepper School students. Please be seated. All right, we got through all the colleges and schools and the programs. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming all of our new students across all of our outstanding programs. Even as we conclude today's convocation ceremony, the celebration of our new students will continue throughout the year. If you're new to CMU and run into me on campus, run into the provost, the deans, our faculty, colleagues, and staff, I hope you will stop 
and introduce yourself. I look forward to meeting many of you in the days and weeks ahead. Once again, congratulations and welcome to the class of 2025 plus. We cannot wait to see the mark you will make on our community. Congratulations again to all of you. At this point, I'm going to invite Andrew to come back to the podium to wrap up this event. Andrew. Thank you, Dr. Jahanian. In closing, I'd like to express my thanks to President Jahanian, Provost Garrett, Professor Cochran Hameen, Ms. Azamak, Johnny Kagwin, deans, faculty, staff, friends, and most of all you, the class of 2025 plus for attending this special ceremony. Once again, I welcome all of you to the Carnegie Mellon community and wish you the best for this coming semester and the rest of your time at CMU. Thank you and enjoy the remainder of your orientation.